Hey guys, this is Matt Noakes for another episode of Let's Talk Hitting. We're here with Jarrett Gardner and his brother Taylor Gardner. And they have this incredible project that they're doing and a product that I remember talking about it. We were talking about this shoot. Well, when, when, you, when, you, when you first thought about it, we, were, we, talk, we talked about it on the phone for about three hours. And uh, it was an amazing idea you guys had. And it's the, uh, the backspin tee. Yeah, the, uh, the pitching coach is actually um, understand this a lot more, that uh, we're always trying to keep the ball down in the zone. We, we instinctively want ground balls from a lot of pitchers. Yeah, the pitching coaches really want the ball down in the zone. We're always preaching ground balls. If we can get 27 ground balls in a game, we have a very good chance to win. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, we are always trying to keep the ball down because it, it, we're trying to get the hitters to hit the top of the ball. And so when we talk to the uh, pitching coaches, they're the ones that understand it because that's what we preach all the time. We study hitters all the time, find out their tendencies, find out uh, you know, where their holes in their swings are, where their leaks are, and uh, we try and exploit them the best we can. You know, I mean, it was always a frustration for me hitting off a tee. You never want to hit the tee. So even though you know you want to hit the bottom of the ball because you want to hit what you're aiming at and you want to hit a line drive, a low line drive is actually the higher tra tra you know, trajectory than we actually think. And um, so I, I just always assume that I'm, I'm going to hit part of the tee. But it's never quite a good feeling. And, uh, and so this whole idea of, ha of not having anything underneath um, is a is a real is a real neat feeling, um, Taylor. You said something about how you had some feedback from players that felt like they could, they felt a little different with it. Yeah, especially the negative feedback, like you talked about uh, when you hit a tee. Uh, with ours, the negative feedback is when you hit the top of the ball, which is obviously the part of the ball that uh, pitchers want you to hit. So when you change the negative feel to the proper proper negative feel part of the ball you don't want to hit you get the positive feel on the right part of the ball you want to hit and that's it's, it's amazing that that's what stands out in players minds since uh they practice in bp hitting line drives but apparently off a of tee they're getting the wrong feel and the the t hasn't changed in over 100 years so uh, i feel like that's pretty important for every ball player to be hitting off a of tee and not have the right positive and negative feel when they're training on it so a lot of young players are afraid to hit the tee really you know i mean they're going to swing and miss and hit the tee and knock it over and, uh, you know, I, I have a real big thing for a pre-thought, pre-feel. Um, that's how I always felt. I could, I, you know, I could tell, like, it felt solid. Like, if, if I was going to get a hit, I could, just the bat felt right in our hands. Major League players, you see them in the, in the bat room. It's, hey, can I try your bat? You know, everyone's exchanging bats because if, if you change your feel, it changes everything. And, um, and, and with this the actual fact that you can hit what you're aiming at. I mean, the trajectory to hit a low line drive is actually a lot higher than we think. I mean, if we're hitting the center of the ball, it's not gonna reach the outfield grass. The game that we play when we say, okay, let's play you know, line drive round in batting practice. The game that we play, it's, it's gotta hit the grass, gotta pass the dirt. And it's, you know, guys are hitting the dirt if they're hitting the center of the ball. You know, one thing I noticed that I, I'd like to point out here. When I, when I used it, I felt like getting into my legs, it makes you, when, when you get up there, it makes you want to get into your legs. It makes you want to get down underneath it as opposed to teeter-totter kind of up above it. Andy Stankiewicz, what's up, my brother? My teammate, Andy Stankiewicz from New York Yankees. Yes, yeah, okay, we're doing a little, we're doing Let's Talk Kitty. If it's Let's Talk Kitty, we got Andy Stankiewicz right here. Come on, come on around the corner, come on around the corner. Got anything with he's one of my brothers in arms, New York Yankees. Uh, we're talking about hitting the top of the ball. You can hit the top of the ball, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a ground ball. Ground ball. And, you know, don't hit ground ball. We don't yeah, what, what do the pitchers want? The pitchers want you to hit the top of the ball. And uh, and so, you know, they came up with the backspin T and um, so we were just kinda talking about it, but uh, it, it kinda gives you the freedom to wanna I don't know, when I hit off of it. I feel like I want to get down, un get down into my legs, and that's a good feel, as opposed to feeling like, okay, I want to hit it really good, but I don't want to hit the tee. But really, I want to hit the tee because I got to hit the bottom of the ball. What are the conversations that you're having with players that, that are insisting on hitting the top of the ball, Jarrett? 
Well, a lot of their, well, a lot of them are. Uh, they're so intrigued in the myths of hitting. They they've been told their whole careers to to do a certain swing path or a certain feel, and it's a flawed statement. I mean, they're they're doing what their high school coach or college coach or even their, uh, you know, one on one training coach. And the thing is, if it's starting to see a shift in philosophy of swing pass with the slow motion technology nowadays that they're actually analyzing swing path bat speed you know when is the barrel dropping into into onto the path of the ball and you know I, I don't think you know 20 25 years ago that we didn't have the technology to understand a lot of this it was it was in a blink of an eye and, and you saw what you wanted to see and, and, and you know now we can see what the ball flight of the pitch is coming coming in something really interesting that what I've heard from you is that you've been really having some, some some high exit speeds coming off your bats. You've had kids coming in in the 70s and they leave in the 90s in one session just because they're they're letting it go. Yeah, they, they can actually cut loose on this tee. I mean, it weighs 18 pounds and actually the tee's taking less of the force that a normal tee does because of the way we've designed it. And they can cut loose on it. You know, they can come out there and, and swing. We've had uh, a softball player hitting 107, 109 miles an hour. Tee holds up fine. We've had the baseball players hitting 102, 110, 115 off of it. And I mean, they're taking the, the gorilla hacks. You know, they're not, they're not letting up. And they, they've always said that they, they never felt like they could do that off a normal tee. That they always kind of restrict themselves. So, Andy, what are you doing, brother? Oh, I know you're at Grand Canyon. Nice Christian school there, and it's a, uh, it's good, good. Yeah, is everything? Here to learn, here to learn from Matt Noakes. Matt Noakes can hit. Matt Noakes can hit now. Andy Stankowitz and I were were you know, teammates with the Yankees, and and uh, you know, I talked to Kevin Moss pretty 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 recently. I haven't heard from Randy Villardi in a while. Did you hear from Randy? What's he up to? Is he hiding? He's like the mayor of Midland, I think, out in Midland, Texas. He's, uh, he's probably hunting. Yeah, he's hunting. He's hunting and just doing his own deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally think that guys think top of the ball just as an approach idea, like the barrel above your hands. Yeah. I do too. I think guys, uh, it's, uh, we, we, in teaching, we, we share it a lot just because, and it depends on your player. If you've got a guy that, that's a great runner, that's not very strong, at, in our college ball, that if he hits a fly ball, it's going to be an out. So you have to understand your personnel. Like this guy is better off is is actually hitting the ball on the ground to put pressure on the defense. But for the most part, once once you guys get more physical and they can understand, you know, bat playing and, and kind of working through the zone and staying in, inside the ball, you do want more fly balls. You think about it. You got you got three outfielders and you got five infielders, right? Three outfielders covering a bigger area to cover, and you got five infielders covering a smaller area. So just from the standpoint of, of five infielders versus three outfielders, I want to hit a ball in the air with some backspin, right? With, with, right. Even a low line drive is not that high. It's pretty, you know, I mean, low line drive is low, but it's a higher trajectory than we think. But if you want your college guys, guys that can run, to hit the ball on the ground, they actually have to hit what they're aiming at, though. Well, yeah, they, they got to stay up the middle of the field because if you, hit a, if you don't care how fast you are, if you hit a ground ball a second, you're out. If you a ground ball to first, you're out. But if you can learn to stay inside the ball and work through it, right, hit a ground ball on the six hole or, or up the middle, if you can run a little bit, you got a good chance of getting an infield hit, right? Um, and I think if they learn that swing, that method, then they start staying inside the ball and hitting the bottom part, then that's when they start to be able to become that line drive hitter. And if they get stronger and more physical, now all of a sudden balls are in the gap, then, then maybe balls even start leaving the yard, you know? Start leaving the yard like Andy Stankowitz. <laughs> the BP round. It's been great to see you, but don't leave. Don't leave here for a second. All right, all right, man. But, uh, hey, thanks, guys, for coming on. And you've really done a good job taking the, taking the news out to the world, really. How have you, how have you been doing that? Uh, <laughs> Social media marketing is uh, quite a beast in itself. Um, you're only allowed 5,000 friends if you're a personal page, which most of us have our own personal private pages. And uh, so we started off doing that. And uh, once you reach the 5,000 limit of the right people that we want in our group, uh, we then convert to a business page. So immediately when we started uh, boosting money into marketing for Facebook, um, we were reaching anywhere from 20,000 people to 250,000 people uh, with the click of a button. And it, you know, it, it's very cost effective. And so within 12 months, uh, you know, we have 
tens of thousands of followers and uh, people just waiting for that next model to come out to blow their mind. And on top of that, we have such good information that we've learned from you that uh, we're able to post more than just tea stuff. That's something that really separates us from other tea companies outside of the, the, the basis of our concept is we have more information. We can put pictures, uh, you know, demographics are up there and our graphics up there and uh, we can show the angles of flight and it all is related back to how to get on path of the wall and hit through the bottom half, um, which obviously brings in more customers to our team. I want you to tell that story of one of the first shows that you did and, you know, guys were walking by, the, you know, it's an upside down T and uh, there was a, I guess there was a manager and a coach and, and, uh, and there was a pitching coach and so he started talking to the pitching coach and then it, it, something ended up happening. Yeah, the, there, there was three coaches. There was, there was uh, the head coach, the manager, and then the pitching coach and hitting coach are flanking him, just like they always do at these conventions. And, uh, you know, we were so tired of, of talking to the hitting coaches because the hitting coaches are – they're very – creatures of habit of what they believe you weren't quite sure what you were going to get right right so i mean being a pitching coach myself you know i feel like i, I can relate to more pitching right. coaches so we stopped the pitching coach and and asked him you know i want to ask you about what you teach your your pitchers and you know do you keep the ball up in the zone or down in the zone and he said well, i i tell my pitchers to keep the ball down in the zone but he goes isn't this a hitting tee why are you asking me and I was like, because because I don't I don't know I don't know hitting I, I I'm a pitcher I know how to get hitters out, okay, and so um, I can relate to you. And he goes, yeah, I, I want the ball down. I want them to hit ground balls. And I was like, okay, so what part of the ball do you want them to hit when you're pitching? Well, I want them to hit the top of the ball. And you could see the hitting coach, like almost jaw hit the ground. Just oh my gosh. And I looked over at the pitch or a hitting coach, and I was like, you know, are you teaching to hit the top of the ball to your hitters? He goes. Well, I'm not now. <laughs> it's it's so so the the manager the manager the head coach, you know, looked around, smiled, bought three of them right there on the spot. So it was honestly the pitching coach that, that did the sell for us. That is a great story. I love that because it's just it's just so true. It's and really, you know, aiming. You want to hit what you're aiming at, and you want to in a low line drive, which means to hit the outfield grass. It's pretty far out there, to, what about 130 feet. It's a long ways, and if it's not up at a pretty good trajectory, you're hitting that. It's 10 degrees. Oh, man. So Taylor, what do we do if we want to get one? Well, you can uh, go to our website at www.backspintea.com. Uh, you can call us. Our phone number is on that website as well to place an order. Um, or you can go to our Facebook page where we actually run uh, quite a few discounts. Uh, we have weekly discounts, monthly discounts, uh, trying to help everyone out that we can. Um, you know, th this Pro Model T, uh, it, it, it does take more to build, but uh, when you're building quality, um, out of quality materials, you, you don't cut any corners. And, uh, but you can go to our website and order it from there. It's nice talking to you guys. And, uh, and good luck to you.